Hello family, we thank God for today. As I shared yesterday, we're going to start um, looking at um, what God has to say to us concerning faith and people of faith. And so um, today I will go back to where we left off from in March before we, our 40 day prayer focus, which was um, in Genesis chapter 25. Today I'm going to be reading Genesis 25 from verse 21 to verse 26. Genesis chapter 25 from verse 21 to 26. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was unable to conceive children. And the Lord granted his prayer and Rebekah, his wife, conceived twins. But the children struggled together within her, kicking and shoving one another. And she said, If it is so, that the Lord has heard our prayer, why then am I this way? So she went to inquire of the Lord. I want you to please take note of that. Praying for an answer. The Lord said to her, The founders of two nations are in your womb, and the separation of two nations has begun in your body. The one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Again, I really would want you to please take note of this. Um, I would make reference to it in, in the coming weeks. Um, the statement here. Verse 24 says, When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out reddish all over like a hairy garment, and they named him Esau, hairy. Afterward, his brother came out and his hand grasped Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob, one who grabs by the heel, supplanter. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. Today, I want to share with you that a people of faith inquire of the Lord concerning their children. Now, this is a story that I think um, has so many lessons to be learned um, and also some very profound and hidden truths that I think that um, for any parent or anybody who is believing God for children, um, I would encourage you to really, really um, pay attention to what I'm about to share. And even if you've had children already, but you know somebody who is expecting or you ever encounter anybody who's in a place where they're expecting children, I would encourage you, if you can, to share what I'm about to, to um, share with you as the Lord has laid on my heart. Now, we know that um, the Bible tells us, that, for example, that before Jesus was born, that um, the angel had visited Mary and had spoken to Mary about how the Spirit of God would come upon her and how she would conceive a child and what Jesus would do and the purpose for which God um, was sending this particular child. Often we can think as people of faith that it is only a set few children who God would ordinarily want to speak about because maybe they're peculiar, maybe there's something unique about them. So God would, um, if you like, announce ahead of time, even before their conception or even before they are born, while they're in the womb, that maybe he was going to use them for X, Y, Z. But in this particular story, we see that there's a whole twist because the Bible tells us that it was actually Rebecca who had gone to the Lord, prayed to the Lord, because there was something that was going on inside of her. All this kicking maybe could be movements and so on. She could have thought, oh, you know, it's probably just what one would expect um, when one is pregnant. But she didn't think like that. She decided to go to God, whom she acknowledged was the person who had heard her husband's prayer for them to have children. She decided that she was going to inquire of God who had formed the, the child that she was carrying in her womb. Obviously, at the time that she was going to inquire of the Lord, we, we understand from what I've just read that she didn't even know that she was carrying twins. There was no scan, scanning of, pre, of pregnancies and all of that. No technology for her to be able to even work out whether it's a boy or a girl she's going to have. And therefore, there was no way she would have ordinarily been able to rely on medical intervention to even know that she was carrying twins. 
But thank God for God's love, God's mercy, God who says to us that he will reveal deep and hidden things to us when we call upon him. Because what science would have done or would do in our day, the Lord did for Rebecca. Because the Bible tells us that God said to her that the reason why you're feeling all that you're feeling is because they're twins. You're carrying twins. And not only that, but gave her an insight as to what their future would look like. And so not only did she see God intervene and do what in our day would require medical um, intervention to, to, to be able to determine the sex of our child or whether we're having twins or what, what not. But God actually spoke to her concerning these children, generations or concerning their generations to come because God says to her then that, you know, these children that you're carrying, they're not just, they're not just ordinary children, but they're two nations that you're carrying. So in other words, God had not only just answered her prayer for her to be able to conceive, but God had even gone a step further, giving her beyond what she had asked for, which was that she was going to be an ancestor of generations, of nations to come. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that incredible? And so as I share with you today, the Lord really laid it on my heart that, you know, we need to start as a people of faith to begin to realize that we're not to wait for our children to become older before we start asking him or trying to find out, Lord, you know, what are you going to do with my child, this child that I'm carrying? Sometimes even parents would only go to God and start interceding on behalf of their children when those children begin to exhibit characters that they know is not right. Maybe their moral standards is not where they want them to be. Maybe they're not disciplined enough. Maybe they're causing problems. That's when some parents, even believers, would begin to really pray and intercede for their children. But God is saying that even before our children are born, even before your grandchildren are born, if we will seek his face and inquire of him who those children are, what their purpose in life is supposed to be, he will begin to speak And because, you know, it is important because the Bible says that the people perish for lack of knowledge. I believe that there are many adults now, even many children now who have missed their call on God, of God on their lives, who uh, may be doing well successfully as far as the world is concerned, but are not living in purpose, fulfilling purpose, because one, nobody knew. Nobody interceded on their behalf to discern the purpose for which God had given them so that they would make so that the parents or whoever was the one who maybe had had the revelation would somehow steer them in the way or the path that God wants them to go. But God wants us to be a people who one discern why he's given us our children, what their purposes on earth is supposed to be. So that as parents, when we're making decisions, even about the schools they would go to, decisions and about maybe encouraging our children to take a particular career path and so on. We're not supposed to be leaning on our own understanding. We're supposed to be encouraging them to pursue those things that would enable them fulfill divine purpose and assignment. The reason why that is important is because first and foremost, we are only stewards. God has called us to be stewards for our children. He's given them to us for a season. And one day when we stand before him, we will give an account of how we we brought up our children, not whether we provided for them economically, put a roof over their heads, send them to the best of schools and all of those things. We could do all the things that the world says when you do, it shows that you're a good parent. But if we miss the spiritual aspect of it, their spiritual growth and development, and we do not inquire of the Lord, not only could we be derailing their future destiny in God, but we could actually even be shooting ourselves in the foot. Because as time goes on, we will come to realize that at some point, one of these, the the twins that Rebecca had, Esau, didn't actually live up to the sort of standard that the parents would have hoped that he lived up to. So it is really, really important, parents. And if we've got adult children or our children are old already, we never prayed for them while they were in the womb and so on, it is still not too late. If we will begin to seek the face of God, he will begin to speak to us. 
He will begin to show us the things that he has in their future. And he will show us that how we're to steer them, how we're to encourage them, and how we're to even pray for them. Because God wants to do some incredible and amazing things in the lives of our children and in our generations to come. But we are to seek his face and we're to inquire of him concerning our children and our generations to come. In closing, I'm going to go over our memory verse for today, which is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith, even when faced with death. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. And as you inquire of the Lord, On behalf of your children, your children's children, and even the generations to come, may the Lord hear you from his holy sanctuary and reveal to you, according to his word that says that when we call upon him, he will hear us and he will show us great and unsearchable things we have not known. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.